According to the study International, more than 1.2 billion women all over the world do not have access to basic sanitation. Menstrual periods are open secrets, but period poverty suffered by many women in Nigeria is shrouded in absolute secrecy. While period poverty is the inability to afford sanitary wares and products during menstruation, what cannot be exhaustively defined is the ripple effect of this type of poverty on women. Period poverty is, in a layman's term, the inability of a woman or a girl to afford pads or menstrual hygiene education. So it means that the average girl in Nigeria cannot afford to buy disposable pads comfortably every single month. And then she has to be on a period every single month. Also, you find out that there are different kinds of information that is out there and that they don't have access to quality menstrual hygiene education. In many African countries, menstruation is rarely talked about, yet remains a stressful problem for teenage girls. The challenges I face is that the discomfort, first the pains when it comes, then my appetite level, I get to eat more than usual, to eat absurd things at times. Particularly those from low-income homes who have to skip classes because they cannot afford sanitary pads. Others ask for permission to leave school premises and many stay at home during their periods. It is a serious problem and one that makes girls vulnerable to exploitation. There are men who demand for sex in return for buying them sanitary part they desperately need. The problem is, I don't think a lot of people understand that when I say the average girl cannot afford pads in Nigeria, the average girl cannot afford pads in Nigeria. And also the economy is not so buoyant for everybody. Menstrual health is not just a woman's issue. Globally, 2.3 million people live without basic sanitation services and in developing countries, only 27% of people have adequate hand washing facilities at home. This is according to UNICEF. Not being able to use these facilities make it harder for women and young girls to manage their periods safely and with dignity. Research by Information Nigeria shows that many Nigerian girls and young women now use clothes napkins, cutting walls, rags, newspapers and tissue paper due to escalating cost of tampons. See, apart from the fact that some of them have not even seen pad before in their life, some of them use tissues, um, cutting wool, um, rags, newspapers, believe it or not, yes, and then, anyway, so we give them this pad. Before, we used to give them disposable pads, and then now we made it more um, eco-friendly and so that it will last longer, we give them reusable pads. Now, these reusable pads can last them for almost four years, a, a year to four years, and then we teach them how to use it, what to do, what not to do, menstrual hygiene tips, basically, and how to take care of themselves. To ensure that girls and women do not go back into period poverty, Sanitary AIDS Initiative, founded to help girls feel more comfortable and manage their periods better, raises awareness on the importance of good menstrual hygiene management. It was basically established to tackle the issue of period poverty. From my experience, when you use a pad that you react negatively to, I would say substandard in this sense, um, you have you could get infections from using bad pads. I don't know if I'll call them bad pads, but substandard, well, quality pads. So um, you have infections from doing that, and then this can lead to long-term health complications in a woman. And then the problem is people do not know about this. They don't know about long-term implications of using terrible substandard um, products when it comes to sanitary pads. The group collaborated with Information Nigeria to enlighten girls on the importance of menstrual hygiene as well as distribution of reusable sanitary pads at a Jigunle community in Lagos.
we've come to this um, environment before and we gave out disposable pads and those disposable pads of course we have to come back again next month and give you pad again right so we decided to give you um reusable pads you know what reusable means what's reusable you can use it again and it's eco-friendly what do i mean when i say eco-friendly it's not harmful to the environment because by the time you use disposable pads you have to throw them somewhere be here so but this one you don't have to do that i'll tell you how to use this one i have one that i'll use for an example yes so there's five of this in this one pack right and it will you can use it for up to a year to four years so this is what it looks like can you see from the back okay this is what one of the pads looks like and then there's five of these in this pack now let's say this is your pants area your vagina area now you place look, look at me oh please I, I want to make sure you see this where this writing is hmm? you place it on your pants right and you turn the wings this, this is what i'm calling wings this two part and you turn it and you make sure you clip it there's a fastener there so you did you hear that sound you clip it and then you are going to go you wear it like that now how to you clean this now you cannot um, soak it in hot water hmm? don't use hot water don't use bleach after you use you soak in normal water then you pour that water away then you put your omo or whatever your normal detergent and you wash it the way you wash your shirt hmm? you wash it and then you spread you have to be very very neat when you are using this eh? and then those for those of us that are still going to school you put maybe one extra one in your in your bag and then it lasts for like six hours so how many hours are we in school six are we seven, seven. seven. <laughs> do not iron it please make sure it is dried completely i'm going to emphasize that completely that's pata pata reusable pods are cloned pods that are easy to manage and last for one to four years they are also eco-friendly the aim of sanitary aid initiative is to provide these reusable pads and quality menstrual hygiene menstrual hygiene education to girls in public schools low-income homes and internally displaced persons camps across the country in Ajegunle, a young girl who does not want her name revealed says whenever her period shows up, she finds it difficult to access pad. Hence, she resorts to tissue or clothes before going out to buy pad. Okay, also at times when my menstruation comes in the morning, like very early in the morning, I find it difficult to get access to pad. I just have to stay like that or use something else for the meantime before, like tissue or clothes for the meantime before I could go outside to go get pad. She added that it being an unexpected incident sometimes, she does not have readily available funds to procure disposable pads. Getting it, the honest, the, the coming that is not even expected. It's something I didn't plan for, the expenses and the rest somehow. If I lady to buy a pad, it give 50 a month, as in, as in, it's very, to see the money too is we have to as in search for it because actually some people they don't like as in depending on their parents you have to as in look for a way to get that money but i really like this one because you can use it up to a year another woman in the community says she does not use pads during her period according to her she uses cutting wool but her daughter has educated her on how to use the reusable pad sanitary aid just gifted girls in the community. Actually, I don't use pad, I use cotton wool. But my daughter just educated me on this pad up. Okay. And I think I would love to try it. A 16 year old girl says she buys tissue whenever she does not have access to pad. She further lamented over the cost of disposable pads. I usually use pad, but if I'm at school, then I saw my period. I'll buy tissue. Bosse, 28 year old, says she suffers from rashes whenever she uses disposable pads. 
She expresses joy over the reusable pad given to her by Sanitary Aid Initiative. <laughs> At the end of the outreach, each girl was given a sanitary pad and enlightened on how it must be used. Through previous campaigns, the 34-year-old activist said, Pad Up Africa has distributed free sanitary pads to schools, mostly in Abuja and its environs, and is now hoping to draw the attention of the government, international organizations in ending stigma and taboos associated with menstruation, and for the Nigerian government to remove tax from pad and other menstrual hygiene products. We give out sanitary pads to young women in IDP camps and girls in public schools from low-income um, background and stuff. So far, we've reached out to about 15,000 girls in Nigeria, which is a good number. But when you look at the amount of girls that are affected by period poverty, you find out that that's just a drop of water in a really large ocean. And our goal is to reach out to more girls as time goes on and then give them reusable pads, which is more sustainable for them in the sense, um, allow them live their lives or develop properly because when you don't have access to good or when you don't have access to sanitary pads, then it somehow hinders your growth as a girl, as a developing girl. And then our goal is also to well, hopefully get the government to subsidize pads or just remove the entire cost of pads and then make it free for girls in Nigeria. Thank you, Sanitary Aid. Thank you, Corporation Nigeria.